Hey everybody, welcome to Petrified Forest National Park. We're here to explore the geological and cultural history of this surprisingly diverse park. So let's do stuff. I'm Tara, that's Lucas. We're on a quest for new adventures and great food. Come along with us as we explore our incredible world. In the high desert of northeastern Arizona is the remains of an ancient landscape, Petrified Forest National Park. Covering 221,000 acres, this park is known for its namesake fossilized wood, created over millions of years through a complex geological process. But this park has far more to offer than just some pretty rocks, with stunning blue hills, a rich cultural history, and a touch of Americana. Established as a national park in 1962, the park sees about 644,000 visitors every year. All right, we got about four hours to explore the park. First up, Visitor Center. When we visited in February 2023, the Visitor Center was under construction. So another building nearby was repurposed as a temporary visitor center. Because of this, there were no major displays, but they had maps, a few posters with information, and a small gift shop. In an adjacent building is a much larger privately owned gift shop. Here, you can buy all sorts of petrified wood, which remember is illegal to collect in the park. They also have a cafe. Let's hop in the car and head to our next stop, Tiffany Point. Snow! Let's go! Back in the car, our next stop is the Painted Desert Inn. Built of petrified wood and other native stone, the Painted Desert Inn was the vision of Herbert David Lohr. Completed in 1924, it operated as a tourist attraction and had six rooms to rent for almost 12 years. Unfortunately, the inn was built on bentonite clay, which can shift and swell with the weather. The inn began showing cracks and water damage. Mr. Lohr sought to preserve the property, and the National Park Service purchased it in 1936 to complete that goal. At that time, the inn was redesigned in the Pueblo Revival style. Since its reopening after World War II, it's operated on and off as an inn and cafe for stretches of time, and it's now operated mostly as a museum with a small gift shop downstairs. From a historic building to an epic overlook, our next stop is Lacey Point. This overlook of the Painted Desert is named after Congressman John Fletcher Lacey of Iowa, who was instrumental in the establishment of Petrified Forest as a national monument. Petrified Forest is the only park in the system containing a section of Route 66. This stretch was opened between 1926 and 1958, and it was the primary way millions of travelers initially experienced Petrified Forest and the Painted Desert. Traces of an old roadbed and weathered telephone poles mark the path of this famous Main Street of America. We're walking to Puerco Pueblo, which is a prehistoric. Ah! <laughs> no! Snowballs! <laughs> no, that's enough. Ah! Ah! All right, we're walking to Puerco Pueblo, which is the remains of a prehistoric settlement here on the Rio Puerco. And apparently, it was built by the Puebloan people. This site is a 100 plus room Pueblo near the Puerco River, and about 200 people lived here until the late 1300s. In the 1200s, due to drought, 
the ancestral Puebloans who lived here moved away from small, scattered homes to large Pueblo communities. There were no doors or windows in the exterior walls. Entry was by ladders over the wall and across the log, brush, and mud roofs. Structures above ground served as living quarters and storage rooms. There are also several subterranean rooms, or kivas, which are ceremonial and religious structures. Also at this site are over 800 petroglyphs on more than 100 boulders. Petroglyphs here were created by ancestral Puebloan people who were living, farming, and hunting here between 650 and 2,000 years ago. Our next stop features even more concentrated petroglyphs. On to Newspaper Rock. Even though it's called Newspaper Rock, it's not a linear story. The markings include family or clan symbols, spiritual meanings, and calendar events. Some mark territory boundaries or migratory routes. Back on the road, we head south, and seemingly out of nowhere appear tall, conical hills striped with layers of purples, grays, reds, blues, and whites. Two of these stunning small mountains are known as the teepees, colored by iron, manganese, and other minerals. A bit further is Blue Mesa Scenic Drive, a three-mile loop that's one of the most scenic in the park. Along this route is the Blue Mesa Trail, a short hike that allows you to explore three million years of geological history. At the trailhead is a majestic overlook with panoramic views. The hills are Chinle Shale and Bentonite Clay, the cool colors are the result of layers of sediment and minerals being drowned underwater and lacking exposure to oxygen. Not a bridge at all. Agate Bridge is actually a partially exposed petrified log spanning a gully at Agate Mesa. The bridge is about 100 feet long, 4 feet in diameter, and 16 feet above the canyon floor. Visitors were once able to walk across or snap a photo while in the middle of the bridge, but fear of collapse prompted the park to stop that from happening. This area is named for the presence of beautiful crystals that can be found in the petrified logs. This trail offers one of the best opportunities to experience petrified wood deposits. Well, Somehow, we got this far into the video without really explaining what petrified wood is. Not wood at all, it's a fossil that forms when plant material is buried by sediment and protected from decay. Mineral-rich groundwater flows through the sediment, replacing the organic material with silica, calcite, pyrite, or opal. The resulting fossil often exhibits preserved details of the bark, wood, and even cellular structures. Though they look like wood, they're much heavier and more dense. so scared. Uh, What's it afraid of? It's not even wood. Is it afraid of this wind? Yes, it is. Might be afraid of this wind. <laughs> well, we got a late start to the day. We got here at about 3 o'clock. 
Park closes at 5. It's 5.08. There's signs everywhere that say, be in your car at 5.30. We're going to miss Agate House. I really wanted to make it over there. Um, but our last stop is Big Logs. Um, right here in the Rainbow Forest section. Right by the um, museum. Right by the museum and right by the exit to the there's, park. There's some of the biggest logs in the park, so that's really cool. So we're going to check it out and then we're going to get in our car and head out. Giant Logs features some of the largest and most colorful logs in the park. This is amazing. I know I find myself using a lot of superlatives at national parks, but this one, very underrated. I honestly thought it was gonna be just a few little bits of petrified wood here and there. It's... I had no idea about the Blue Mesa and all the history and the petroglyphs and everything. It's extremely underrated. What a great park. I wish we had more than two or three hours here. Definitely wanna come back. Mm -hmm. It's so much more than just petrified wood. Yeah, um, and man, this wood is just gorgeous. Obviously, it's not wood. These crystals uh, are just incredible. The colors and some of the size, how these were preserved so perfectly. The log behind us, which you just saw, is incredible. <laughs> just it's, unbelievable. It's a tree that existed millions of years ago when this was a subtropical rainforest. Which is what mind blowing. <laughs> <laughs> it's so many national parks, I find myself saying this, it's like another planet. I love it here. Really cool. But thank you so much for coming along. That's all we got here. If you haven't yet, please take a moment to subscribe. It really helps us out. And give this video a like down below. Really appreciate that. Thank you so much, and we'll see you in the next one.